Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Hugh here from Creator Up. Today, we are going to talk about the pole production and special effect pipeline of the YouTube Red VR 180 experience, Escape the Night, which has almost millions of views on YouTube. A lot of good comments, like 20,000 thumb up on YouTube alone. I think it's very rare right now in the VR industry that any good, any VR piece actually have good comment and thumb up on YouTube. So Lex, the director of this piece, gonna share his secret with you today. But let me let you introduce yourself. Sure. Hey, I'm Lex Hallaby. I'm a VR director. Um, I've been directing experiences, immersive experiences for the last five years with brands uh, such as Coca-Cola and Ford and Budweiser and studios like Netflix, Warner Brothers. Um, a lot of different experiences, both live action and game engine experiences. Um, and today I'm going to walk you guys through the VR experience for Escape the Night called Welcome to Everlock um, that is on Google Daydream. So the project came about when Daydream approached uh, myself and the creators of the show to come up with a cinematic VR experience that's in VR 180, a format that is 3D and front facing 180 degrees in front of you. So it's like high resolution, really good 3D. And they came and they said, hey, we want to create an experience in the world of Escape the Night, the really popular YouTube series. In the beginning, it was like pretty open slate. Like we knew we wanted to do something with this haunted merry-go-round, but we really wanted to do something that had never been done before. And when I met with Joey Graceffa, the, the, the host and creator of the show and the, and the other creators and executive producers and directors of the show, I was kind of given like a green light to go crazy with it. Like my only kind of note was like, don't do something basic, like come up with something we haven't seen before. Basic meaning like, don't just like, hey, this is just a 360 video of something we've seen a million times. Like do something interesting, do something that's like outside the box. And that is like a director's dream. When you're given that like opportunity of like go nuts with it. I was like, perfect. I can totally work with that. Yeah, baby, yeah. Uh, so right away, kind of jumped to work and I started thinking, okay, what are some things that VR 180 does really well? Okay, high resolution very good stereo all the way up close to camera. These are things that like it does really well. But what have I not seen? What does VR do well? Well, uh, time dilation is something I had not seen in VR. Yes, we've seen some slow-mo, but have we ever seen like total frozen stop time? No, I hadn't seen that. We've all seen mannequin challenges, but what if you're moving within the world of a mannequin challenge and there's frozen stuff all over in the air as you're moving through it. So that got me thinking like, okay, this is something that will really take people outside the box, something they haven't seen before. So that was kind of the impetus for that. Uh, and Daydream to their credit was like, yes, we love it, go with it. Um, and from there I started writing the piece and storyboarding the piece. Um, so when you are working in VR 180, um, there are some things that you can do that you can't do in 360. And I definitely wanted to like leverage those in this piece. So part of that is um, you can light from off camera because there is an off camera in 360, there isn't. So if you turn around, there's a big, you know, condor with a 10K off of it, you're gonna see it. But in VR 180, you don't have to worry about that. So that's certainly like um, one thing we wanted to lean into. It's a night experience. So you can actually light the scene from off screen. Um, if you are shooting a VR, VR 180 experience. There's a couple things to keep in mind when it comes to lighting though. Um, especially like if you're shooting outside, something that people don't think about oftentimes is where the sun is. Um, if, you know, we shot at night, but if you're shooting during the day, be very cognizant of that sun path because if the sun is kind of going down behind you, that means there's going to be a long shadow from the camera. It's going to be like falling onto actors and all of a sudden they're going to be like, what's this weird shape that's falling on all the actors? Um, the flip side of that is if it's too far down the opposite side, you're gonna get flares in the lenses. Um, they're wide angle lenses, so you're really gonna end up with kind of a, a gnarly uh, flare that you need to comp out in post by shooting plates. So these are just a few things with VR 180 that you run into um, that you know you need to be aware of when, when you're starting to, to, to go through this process. So um, what we did in the piece is uh, I, I knew that in order to capture this frozen moment, um, there were certain things 
in the air that we would need to create in CG. But then there are other things that we can actually shoot practically. So believe it or not, all the actors that are actually in the experience that are frozen in time are just holding really, really still. And they did a great job of doing that. Um, you can't tell so much that that's happening because uh, they're just holding still and the camera is moving through them. If the camera was locked off, you may be able to see a little bit more of their movement. But um, that is really like, the key to sort of creating these very elaborate frozen scenes and then being really smart about, you know, yeah, we may have to paint out some stuff here and there. We need to add 3D particle effects and objects into the air. That's really what's tricking your brain into feeling like it's a frozen moment. I'm gonna play through some footage from the post process because a lot of people have questions about how the effect was achieved. Um, so again, this is a daydream project. Weaver was the production company and Sunny Boy Entertainment did the visual effect. So first of all, we shot this on a Z-Cam K1 Pro. Um, you can actually see it here on the footage on a techno crane, which is pretty funny because it's like this small lightweight piece of equipment on this massive techno crane. But that's how we achieved this moving through the scene effect is we were actually telescoping out on the crane. Um, and that's like really, really key to getting that feeling of all these shots linking together is moving at the same speed, same height through every single scene. And it worked pretty well. Like people were worried at first, like, okay, is it gonna feel like we're bobbing? Are people gonna get sick? We just kind of locked everything off, took our measurements very carefully um, and set a consistent speed for every shot to move through from scene to scene. It allows us as well, like you can't do it on a rover or something like that on the ground, on rough turf and like, you can't go over people, you can't go over fences, things like that. So we, it allowed us to kind of be able to move over everything and really kind of make it like you're along on this ride through the experience. So this is what that, that's what that camera setup looked like. So here's the raw footage um, that was processed out of the Wally manager. So this is what I'm talking about where you can actually see people moving around. You saw them there for a second, like they were kind of getting into position before the take went. But once they're locked into position, they hold really, really still. And then here we move the camera through the scene. So, you know, very, once the camera's moving, you really can't get that sense that, that the actors are moving and they're holding pretty still. So it's really about not blinking. Um, once we have that, that is like the raw footage that came back from the, from the Wally manager. Um, I'll show you this next step, which is shooting tracking marks and lighting reference. Once we felt that we had a pretty good, um, a pretty good take that we're all happy with. We put tracking marks in 3D space where we're gonna be putting CG objects into it. Uh, so we just put some tracking marks on C stands. There's a lot of visual information there for the tracker to latch onto. We also shot a 3D still from where the subject is in the scene. That way we can actually look at where the lighting is and when we are actually modeling and putting objects into 3D space, you can actually kind of basically put the lighting back onto those objects to make it feel like it's really there. Once we actually have that shot uh, with the tracking marks going through it, now we're in post here and we are placing temporary 3D geometry. They're just these kind of cubes basically, but because we're doing this in 3D for left and right eye, we really need to be careful about tracking and where things actually look like in physical space. So in that case, you know, it may, not look like much is going on there, but I need to put on a VR headset. I need to make sure that those 3D objects, even though they're just little cubes, actually look like where they need to be. It doesn't look like it's behind somebody's head or in front of somebody's head. That's how you guarantee in 3D that the tracking is spot on and looks accurate. And how can you see 3D in editing software? Is this in Premiere or what do you use? Yeah, uh, so both in After Effects and in Premiere, I can look at these renders uh, in 3D um, in real time, which is great. Like there's great software for it. You can go into the Adobe immersive environment, pop on a headset and be able to look around and be able to scrub and leave marks, tracking, not tracking marks, but leave actual marks in your sequence mm -hmm. to sort of like be able to give it back to the VFX artist and say, hey, um, you know, I like this take the best, this had this issue. And you can actually do that from within VR, which is really great. Nice. Um, so once we have uh, the geometry in the right place and we feel good about that, we start creating our particle sim. So I'll pause it part way through here. What that 
particle sim is is like a 3D cloud that we're going to be moving through in this shot. So um, you know, to do this, we did it in Cinema 4D, and we created this particle effect. What you're seeing here is actually the animation of it being created. But because it's a frozen moment, we're really just taking this last frame of it. And then once we have that last frame of it as a 3D object, we can bring it back in and track it into this scene. So even though you're looking at it in 2D here, if you had your headset on, it would look like they were enveloped in this cloud. Even though it's covering their face and stuff, we're gonna be cleaning that up later. This is just to give you a sense of what it feels like to move through it. Mm -hmm. So you'll see that it's green and blue. We actually changed the color later to fit the scene better. Um, so then we did CGI modeling in Maya. So there are things floating in the air, like sun, like the guy's sunglasses, like tickets from the carnival, all these kind of like particle effects in the air. These particles really sell the idea that the moment is frozen. So you're seeing those now put into this sequence as well. And then almost in every step, we're kind of bringing it back into After Effects and doing some cleanup and compositing work. So at this stage, you've seen the creation of the particle cloud. You've seen the um, tickets. You've seen the modeling of the glasses. It's all been tracked in. The 3D has been figured out. The lighting is now being applied back onto these objects. And we're just doing cleanup and roto and After Effects, doing some color correction and a few other things um, that really kind of give it you know, some of that final polish. Um, so what you're seeing here is now the near completed shot. So there's some glow and there's some translucency and some other things done to that. Really? So here's the final render along with optical flow uh, put onto it to slow it down even further. So we took that footage and we actually added frames. Uh, this is because if people are moving a little bit, if you shoot at a higher frame rate or you're able to slow it down a little bit in post, you'll actually hide some of that movement. So that was just the portion um, that we kind of did in the last step along with the timing of the edit to really like give it that dreamlike kind of quality as you're moving through it. Let's talk about camera movement because there's actually a lot of camera movement with even the, the crane moving. Mm -hmm. So just go general, like what is some effective cinematic camera movement for VR 180? Yeah, absolutely. In VR 180, one of the great things about it is you can move the camera a little bit more easily because you can hide whatever is moving the camera behind you. So in our case, it was a techno crane. And pushing through scenes, I find to be really, really effective because mm -hmm. it gives the viewer sort of an overall direction that they're moving through a scene. It gives them something to focus on. Mm -hmm. And in this case, in each of these scenarios, it was a YouTuber kind of at the end of this move. So mm -hmm. we're kind of bridging all these moves together. They're all shot at the same speed. So it has the effect of it feeling kind of like one long moving take, even though we're sort of transitioning and there's wisps that kind of take us from one scene to the next, mm -hmm. it still feels like a continuous move. And then there are a couple other moves, like you mentioned, there's like a big boom down sort yeah. of from revealing the space, space and the yeah. carnival and revealing uh, Joey below you. So for that, you know, I felt comfortable with that speed of move and that action of move just because mm -hmm. we kept our horizon nice and clean. And, you know, again, like Daydream was trusting us to show off what VR 180 can do really well. Mm -hmm. And that's from lighting and camera moves and other things where it's kind of that middle ground with like between, you know, our traditional cinema and VR cinema, that kind mm -hmm. of cinematic VR experience. So we are kind of using some of those traditional tools in new ways on this one. So what about the audio for this piece? Is it spatial audio or is it not? Yeah, I mean, it's it's VR 180. It is spatial audio. As you'll hear, like there's some instances when you're like passing by something that you may actually hear it move across left or right, mm -hmm. um, you know, as it's passing you on one side or the other. I mean, it is, main, you know, it's music driven. Mm -hmm. So that is kind of like, front and center throughout like the track. Um, but we wanted to add some of that additional texture stuff just so that when you're moving through a space, it actually feels like it's uh, it's moving around you. So in your personal opinion, is it worth it to do spatial audio in VR 180, which you only have half the fears? Um, I think, it, again, it depends on how much you're relying on the audio in your storytelling. I think there's certainly like a case for it, but at the same time, um, you know, if since somebody is not going to be turning 180 degrees and looking behind them, you don't have to worry about a sound from the right ending up on a sound from coming through your left ear. Mm -hmm. For the most part, you're going to be within this range of movement. So, um, you know, if you don't have like the time or budget for it, you can certainly get away with the stereo mix. Awesome. 
I think we get a lot out of you. So if you have more questions, comment below and we will try to answer as much questions as possible to help you to create your first piece in VR 180. Again, tell us how can we find you on internet? Yeah, you can uh, follow me on Instagram at Lex Hallaby. Um, you can check out some of my other work and blog posts about the work at uh, www.lexhallaby.com. So what is your next piece? What are you gonna do for Daydream or whatnot? Yeah, so I definitely wanna experiment more in VR 180. It's an area where um, I think that Daydream has done a great job providing mm -hmm. tools to help creators uh, do work there. So um, I'm pitching a couple series that are fully VR 180. So nice. I'm uh, hoping to get those off the ground and moving soon. So guys, meaning more stuff like this and I'm very excited. I hope you are. So if you wanna look at more behind the scenes, of our superstar director right here hit the subscription button below give me a like if you can and we will see you next time